So, back in the shop this afternoon uh, to make some more progress on this Benjitar restoration. Um, stay tuned. So, while um, waiting for the new tuners and the strings to arrive, um, I decided to go ahead and get a little bit more uh, progress on the uh, Benjitar restoration. So here, um, you'll see I've um, filled in the uh, tuner holes, right? Um, and actually put a little bit of wood filler on there. Now, I decided to switch to a little bit different wood filler, this Elmer's here. Um, it has I don't know, kind of a, I don't know, like it, it initially feels kind of like a plastic, but then um, it actually does have kind of a grainy feel now that it's dried a little bit. But I, I want to show you um, a technique that I use. So sometimes maybe, maybe you've got a guitar, you know, maybe you've got just an old uh, campfire guitar or something around the house, you know, some kind of beater, you want to put um some different tuners on maybe maybe you get a kit and you want to upgrade the tuners um maybe the tuners just wear out and break it happens so um so sometimes it's hard to find tuners that are exactly the size of the um the original hole there right so um what i find works um and kind of what works for me is get you a little dowel right i'm not even sure exactly um let me get my little one of these tools here uh, can kind of help you find um find diameters so it looks like it looks like this dowel here is a little bit bigger than, than one quarter Uh, right about five sixteenths. All right. Um, so, so um, yeah. One one of these tools is is handy when you're trying to figure out, you know, maybe uh, what size drill bit you need for a particular screw, or um, what size hole you need for a tuner. But but you you get your dowel right, and you come in to this tuner hole. And you're going to have to kind of give it a little bit of love, maybe, maybe twist it a little bit, right? Um, but you can get that thing, you can get that thing in there, you know, use, use your finger as a guide. Um, get, a, get it kind of flush. And then I said, you want to get yourself a good flush cut saw. Here is why. Um, let's see if I can get this camera okay so so now i can take this saw right i can lay it right across the top of that headstock and i can just come like this right and what's going to happen is this dowel in short order is going to fall off and you can you can see it there right it's just a nice flush cut so now what i'm going to do is I'm take a little bit of this this wood filler here first of all i'm going to move the saw my way so i don't cut my hand off bring this uh banjo back up here so it doesn't fall off the table but i'm going to take a little bit of this wood filler and go ahead and just kind of even this out here um trying to avoid uh getting it up there on my wood burning i'm gonna flip it over i'm gonna have to kind of rest this banjo pot off the table a little bit but i'm just gonna go ahead and come over to the back and 
you know, and you can do this with a with a spreader. You can do it with um, you can do it with your finger. Um, this is a water based wood filler, and the reason I'm putting this wood filler in um, is really, and yes, it's going to kind of uh, it, it is going to have a little bit different color, and it's going to be um, it is going to be kind of hard to uh to match it with the stain um wood fillers different different wood fillers respond differently um just depending on how they're made but um but i think this this darker um it has kind of a golden oak um is what it says there there on the tube but uh i think it might actually give me a little bit darker um so so look eh, look kind of like a blemish but i don't think it'll be as obvious as um as a matter of fact i'm gonna go ahead really and just kind of take a little bit of the residue from my fingers i'll have to kind of uh have to kind of give it a little bit of love with the with the sandpaper and do a little touch up. Um, but I just didn't like the way that other wood filler, it was just a little too light for my liking. Um, so I think, you know, maybe this darker here and I'll, plus it, it just seems to want to uh, cling better to, to the wood. So, so I think um, I think maybe I'll have a little bit better chance of kind of getting what I'm after now. Um, you've got to let this sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before you can um, do anything with it in terms of sandpaper or whatnot. But um, but yeah, as a matter of fact, I'll probably just go ahead and start this with 220 and then go down to uh then go on down to the uh 320 or the 400 but and then i'll you know once i get it sanded smooth then i'll touch it i'll touch up the, the stain um but anyway, so so like I said, this is just kind of one technique you can use um, that I like to use when it comes to um, putting different tuners on guitars. I mean, it'll work for cigar box guitars. Shoot, you know, I mean, if you've got a L, a thousand dollar Fender, and you want to do something like this with it, I mean, no rules, right? Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I mean, you know, if you've got a brand name guitar like that, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, you probably want to go ahead and just take that on to a luthier and let uh, let a luthier or a professional guitar tech, um, you know, worry about trying to change out those tuners. But um, but anyway, so. So you know, I'll, I'll let that dry, and then we'll let um, you know. And then when those other tuners get here, I'll actually be able to to take this tool here and figure out what size hole I need. And from there, I'll um, I'll grab my bits. Um, you know, I'll, I'll grab my my Forstner bit and drill out the holes and um shouldn't be real hard to uh you know to mark where i'll need my holes but but yeah I'll, you know i'll be able to do that and then you know probably a little one eighth or um you know or a 564th bit to drill the little uh screws for the um mounting screws that go on the back of the headstock and then I'm still debating this uh this little K badge here. I don't know. Um 
I don't really like the idea of putting it on the front, uh, but I am thinking about uh, possibly putting it on the back. But anyway, so so stay tuned. We'll uh, keep you updated as we um, continue to make progress on this thing. Um, you know, I'll come back here in a little bit with um, when it's time to sand. Uh, when it's time to sand and retouch up that uh that stain we'll see you know yeah, i'll come back when it's time to touch up that stain and uh hopefully by then those new tuners will be here and i can you know go ahead and drill out those tuner holes as well um really before i have to uh touch up the stain because i'd really like to get that done and then get that stain good and dry uh before i go ahead and put a clear coat on it okay so we're still waiting for uh those tuners and strings to get here um but while we wait we might as well be uh somewhat productive so this wood filler has now um has now hardened and dried a little bit so now we can go ahead and we can take some 220 grit and then i'm going to go ahead and take some uh, 400 grit and we're going to send this um, this wood filler down, make sure that everything is nice and even. Um, we want to get everything smooth. Um, or as smooth as we can anyway. So, see, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and send this whole headstock down. Um, and then and really what we'll do is um, in doing the sanding, we sand away the excess, right? So that the wood filler really only fills the gaps that it needs to fill. And like I said, putting it um, over those tuner holes, it um, what it does is it'll kind of help to hold them, to hold those, uh, those pieces of dowel in place. Um, I mean, I think that they would have likely been fine as is, but you can never be too careful. And then uh, the other thing too is when those new tuners get here, we'll be we'll be lining those up and. Um, and drilling out new holes so i want to make sure that those dowels stay in place that way they don't pop out uh, because i've got a feeling that what will happen when i start drilling is that while the tuners won't line up exactly with those holes i i have a feeling that there will be some some overlap now um again when when sanding this wood filler down what i'm trying to do is get a nice smooth um a nice slick smooth surface now it's not it's not going to be too slick at this point um but I want to make sure that everything is is kind of evened out. Um, and then and then what I'll do here in a minute is I'll take a uh, microfiber cloth and I will I will go over this thing. And make sure that that all the dust, all the sanding dust, is off. From there, I'll go ahead and take my stain. And I won't have to. I won't have to do the entire neck like I did last night. Um, but I'll have to touch it up now. The now the good thing about that is that yes 
I mean, it takes time for stain to cure and to dry, but no, it won't be as tedious. Um, one thing about getting all this wood filler and getting all the excess out is you minimize how much of the wood filler is is visible because the trick to doing stuff like this is kind of like a lady putting on makeup uh, I remember my mom when I was a kid telling my sister when she was learning to wear makeup was the, the trick to wearing makeup is to look like you're not wearing makeup no I mean I don't know I don't wear makeup I'm not a lady maybe some of the ladies out there can tell me if this is true but it, it makes sense um, it really does um, and so I guess you could think of it like that right that uh, that really what we're trying to do is just kind of fill in some blemishes and kind of even some stuff out now normally normally I don't wipe down between grits of sandpaper but in this case I'm going to go ahead and do that um, because I want to A, I want to make sure when it's time to put that stain on that my surface is as clean as possible um, because any dust that's in there will kind of mar the finish you're trying to go for and um, and especially if you're if you're trying to get a real smooth surface you don't want bumps from from sanding dust and wood filler and that's just you know not necessary right and then two this will tell me how good of a sanding job i did with that uh first grit so then i'll know If I need to maybe, uh, if I need to maybe give it a little bit more love, um, and in this case, I think, I think maybe I do, at least in a couple of places. And again, too, you don't want to go too aggressive. Um, otherwise you will sand off a lot more than you intended to sand off and then you got to kind of repeat the process, cost yourself more time. Yeah, I like this. I think I the other thing this this sanding does. Um, so when I when I put those dowels in there, and I got the flush cut saw, and I sawed off the uh, the end of the dowel there. Um, it did leave because I'm because the blade of that saw is right up against the wood so it did actually leave uh, some bite marks from the from the teeth on the saw blade um, I mean real shallow marks so so you don't really have to get super crazy um, when it comes when it comes to sanding but uh but you still kind of want to 
get those those marks out of there, right? So that way you've got, a, again, a nice, smooth, even finish. Get right here along the heel. This when I got it, um, this heel just was kind of gouged out a little bit. Um, kind of like a little maybe over aggressive with the router or something like that. Um, not bad, but I just felt like we could kind of clean it up a little bit and get it a little bit more, more even. Um, No, I mean, I do like the uh, homemade appearance of this, of this neck. I mean, well, it is homemade. Um, but but you know, I I like it. I do like it neat. Um, You know, so, so this, and I don't know, when, when restoring, when, uh, when building a cigar box guitar, there's always kind of this balance that you're trying to achieve, right? When you're, re when you're restoring something, um, some people kind of have a goal of, well, make it look like it was, you know, like you just pulled it out of the box brand new from the store today right um yeah that's one way to do it um that's not going to happen on a homemade neck like this um so so i think that's probably just not a realistic goal there but I do think that uh, I do think that you can make it still look neat and kind of a professional look, even uh, even though you're not necessarily trying to get like a factory finish. Um, I do think that yeah, I, I do think that you can. Uh, that you can make it look a little less like um, like a preschool art project. Which really is kind of the goal here. Um, like I said, I, I love the homemade look. But I want it. I want it visually appealing to the eye. Um, no, this is not going to look like I uh, bought myself a brand new banjitar, you know, from from a factory store or something like that. Um, what it's going to look like is a banjo pot with a nice banjo head on and a homemade neck attached to it. That's what it's gonna look like. Um, but yeah, you know, again, some people kind of have this, this mentality that, oh, well, you know, I'm doing this homemade thing. I want it to, I want it to look factory. Do you want it to look factory or do you want it to look homemade? Um, because I'm telling you, for the most part, something that you're doing at your kitchen table or 
sitting at a card table in your garage isn't going to look like it uh, came fresh off the assembly line at the factory. I mean, real is real. So now, get that there, that way I don't flub up and accidentally mess my recording up. So now we'll open this, uh, this stain. Got my handy stir stick. We'll give her a good stir. Stain can get messy, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. You always want to make sure um, that you're careful with it. And really, all we're going to do is just give it a little, little touch up. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing, uh, I don't need to coat the whole thing. All right. I mean, this, this headstock, I'll go ahead and, other than the sides of it, I didn't really mess with the sides much because I didn't really put any wood filler there or anything like that, but uh, we'll see how, how this particular flavor of wood filler takes this stain. Which seems to be a little bit better. Than the uh, min wax. Try to be careful not to get any stain on my banjo head here. Then up here and do the headstock. And see, like I said, we're not really applying a whole lot here. Um, Go ahead and touch up the crown of this headstock a little bit just because it does seem to be a little on the rough side. I really kind of want to darken it. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, you'll still notice, if you look at it, you'll still be able to see a little bit of wood filler, but it's not as glaringly obvious as Yeah, well, I done done it. Might as well go ahead and come down the side.
And there we have it. New coat of stain applied. Um, you can see. You can see uh, how it's going to be a little bit lighter where those uh, tuner pegs uh, were and where that wood filler is now. But I mean, really, I think it turned out pretty neat. Um, and we'll see. We'll see what happens when these new tuners get here. Um, you now. I know on the back you probably won't be able to tell anything because uh, the the tuners are three on a plank. The front's going to be the question, um, and a lot of that question is going to be because of the washers, which, incidentally enough, since I filled in those tuner holes. Um, now I can actually, instead of just drilling out for the tuner pegs, now I can actually, um, drill out for the washers too, um, or the ferrules. Uh, so, so I think, um, I think that'll be, that'll kind of help, um, fill everything out too. And then, you know, yeah, you'll see a little bit of, uh, of filler down on the, uh, down around the heel. Um, but I think honestly, the way that heel was shaped, um, kind of the contrast in the wood is not going to necessarily be a bad thing, but anyway, so now we'll let that thing, uh, dry. Um, and from there, uh, we'll probably put a clear coat on her, um, unless those tuners do get here, in which case I'll drill out the, uh, the peg holes before putting the clear coat, clear coat, but we'll see what comes next, either the clear coat or the, uh, peg holes, then the clear coat, then the pegs, then the strings. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button um, or ring that bell and give me a subscribe. Leave a comment or two. We'll see you on the flip side.